Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cudshaw with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is Jose Pereira. So hopefully I said that correctly. Can you say mm -hmm. hi, Jose? Hello. How are you? Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. And for, for those that are listening, he has an amazing story, a crazy amazing story. And he's here to share what happened to him. Uh, my understanding is that really the peak of his career, he was involved in a hostage situation for many years. And I wanted him to share his story and uh, what he learned from that. Can you say hi and explain more? Was I? Well, uh, I, yes, the, my situation happened in 2017. Uh, I was um, in the pinnacle of my career because I, I did a, a 35 years uh, career in the oil and gas. And I was the CEO of a, a multinational here in the U.S., Silco Petroleum. Sigo Petroleum is the U.S. Uh, base of PDVSA, that is the Venezuelan oil and gas. I, I'm Venezuelan-born, dual citizen. And, but I, be, I began in my career in Venezuela, in the oil and gas in Venezuela in the 80s. And I, I, everybody that knows Venezuela about that time was a very wealthy and, and, and good country. Today, that's not the situation, unfortunately. Venezuela has become a mess with a regime that is there, but that but the point is not that I was here, and and in 2017, in the middle of the, the that year, uh, there began to be a lot of political issue between Venezuela and the U.S. because uh, the U.S. Uh, the government at that time, Donald Trump, he declared that that government was illegitimate ill and then began to impose sanctions. And 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 for me, being the CEO of Silco was a big deal because we were in the middle of that thing, but I never imagined that that could affect me directly. So I was going through that situation. I Having 35 years, I talked with my wife and said, you know what, I'm going to get retired. I don't like what's going on here. I'm going to get retired. And, and I, I was planning to become a consultant. So I flew to Caracas asked uh, to my boss to uh, accept my retirement, and he accepted it. So I, I, I came back in October that year, ready to get retired. And came November, I was in my Thanksgiving mode, going to my vacation to get retired, and I received an, a, a call that go, go back to Caracas to make a presentation, and that became to be a settlement. They, they, oh. it, I flew to Caracas with my five top executives, we were six, and they took the six of us uh, as hostage. And to tell you the truth, when that happened, the first thing is that you can never in your nightmare imagine that something like that can happen to you. But I discovered, and today this is one of the things that I talk about, it, I, I became victim of the, what is called the hostage diplomacy that many of these countries apply, that they take hostage uh, some but it may be a high profile person, not a politician, high profile, because they negotiate and they leverage you. And that's what this guy began to do. They begin to ask to get lifted the sanctions, to get lifted the oil ban. Right. To, so can you imagine you in, getting in I that just, situation? Right. You are a target, I think, because of your high level in the industry that you're in. And, and yes, it was yes. so, so we were we were targeted and and believe me when when I, I figure out where we were like one month after, because the, the first month I was in a denial mode. I was saying, no, this is wrong. This is a mistake. I'm going to correct this. Uh, you know, but when, when you re realize that where you are in the situation you are, is that you begin to get scared because like six months after they recalled the U.S. ambassador. So it began to be even worse. When, when, when the U.S. ambassador was re recalled, I, I, I thought that we were left behind. So we, we literally, you think that this can last for years, and it lasted for years. But um, one year before we came back, now is Biden in the in, in office, they, they, they appointed an ambassador to be in charge of the negotiations. And he flew to Caracas, and, and he met us one year before. At that moment, I was sure that we were going to be coming back. I didn't didn't know when when, but I I I was in a mode that really thinking that we were going to come back, and there comes that resilience there, because the the, the the way we decided to manage it, and I'm not 
talking about myself. I'm talking about the six. Because oh. the first year we were isolated, each of us, but, but because the pressure began to get so, so big. Our families in the first year, they, they were silent because that was the instruction that they, they were receiving from the, from the government. They be silent be, because they were trying to negotiate. But after one year, our, our, all the six families got together and, and they went big to the press. They went to all the press and when the press, the, the, the news hit the press, it, it, it really went to all the press and the press they put us like a brand they 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 begin to call us the sit go six so we became like a rock band the sit go six <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, it's funny because uh, uh, after one year we were really the sit go six even in venezuela the all the guards everybody called us the sit go six when they uh, uh, hey sit go six come here <laughs> we became really the sit go six so um well, begin this negotiation, and, and one year uh, after we got together, because they put us together, we created like a survivor plan, and 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 that that really that's a game changer for us because uh, I always talk about that any situation in your life, any adversity, when 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 you got focus in what 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 is happening, and you switch your mind to be positive, even in during a dark moment, but you begin to think that this will have a solution. We're going to figure this out. This is not going to break me. You begin to think positive and and, and get together. Uh, uh, I, I begin to have uh, this strong bond with, with, with our team, and I begin to smuggle letters with my wife. So I begin to smuggle those letters with her. And I, it was a great connection. I, I can tell you, every two days, I was writing a letter to my wife, and she was replying to me. We created like a secret code, and and and, and I I stayed doing that during three years. I wow. kept the next three years writing letters. When I came back, my my wife had already one thousand letters. I, I have a pile of them. Wow. I still have them here. I had oh, to compile them. So part part of the letters. And, and those letters became kind of my memoir, and and that, that's the way I, my book is written based on those letters. And those letters are like a testament of of where, where we were going, what was going in, in our mind, the moment we were living, and 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 it was kind of uh, interesting when when I begin to edit with my wife, you can see the evolution because that is the human nature. When you begin to to think that the things has a solution, you begin to evolve. And that's what we did. We begin to evolve. We begin to think that even we were in a dark moment, this will be solved. And we begin to work on that. We begin to take care of our mental and psychological well-being. We, we begin to pray and read the Bible. So, so we begin to exercise. We were doing meditation, yoga, uh, static running, cardio, push-ups. I begin to do push-ups in my wow. life. So, so because one of one of my guys, he he he's a marathon runner. So he had training how to train himself uh, for, to run a marathon. So he he began to be like a like a coach, training everybody to do things. We began to play domino. We, we we did a domino tournament. We did a lot of things to 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 keep up ourselves sane. And I believe that is part of the, the being resilience. Even that you're in a, in a dark moment, and you can be in something that that you can think that that you're not gonna make it. But if you switch your mindset, it it will be different. So when 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 they opened the door in October first in 2022. We were ready to come. We were ready to come, and and we landed in a Caribbean island with through a prisoner swap. Then we were headed here in San Antonio to a military base where we were submitted to a the compression program. And when we were there and talking with the militaries, they were figure out how we were. They were surprised. They were surprised the way we handled this. E even the ambassador that, that, that was negotiating for us. I remember the first time he, he saw us physically. We had like a two-hour meeting with him. He told us that he was surprised 
how how he saw our morale, how we were a high morale and how we were in a good shape because we begin to really work hard on that. I was always thinking that I didn't want to come back broken. I didn't want to come back, uh, 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 you know, to be a burden to my family. I wanted to be in a peace. And that's what I did. I, I'm not going to say that I, I have a therapist today, every week, and I went through s several process, but, but we were really, really thinking that we needed to come back in one piece to our families. So. I, what, what you're saying made me think that you definitely built, every one of you probably built your leadership skills because you helped each other. Probably what your um, value is to each of each other, right? And that gave you the uh, really proper mindset that is just, I'm sure in the beginning, yes, you had to deal with the scariness, but you knew you had the hope that you're going to get out. Is that the right word? Today, today that I'm a leadership and resilient coach, yeah. this is exactly what I tell the teams. Because when you when you put this picture, this in, in you have you're a leader in a business, and and today in the challenging world, things are changing, and maybe you're having setbacks in your business. If you have the proper mindset and if you had that team, because the, the important here is having the team. That's what we did. We created the bond and we decided to support each other and have a very frank communication. So this is something that you extrapolate to your, to, to, to your life and to your business. Because sometimes the challenges in a business is exactly that. They're, you're not having good communication. You, you're not being empathy this is something that 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 we did too we discovered that we had a lot of commonalities because the six of us were long-term marriage long careers we, we had a lot of commonalities and we begin to talk about our families our kids our grandsons our travels our food our music we discovered that three of us were really big fans of of, of rock and we were all the day talking <laughs> about rock band Every day talking about who was the best rock band player. In the, you know, and we, so you begin to be empathic. And, and, and then you know about the, I remember that uh, one of my guys, uh, he got uh, her, uh, her um, granddaughter born, like three years being there. And, and, and my, my grandson was born like one week after. So, so. Her granddaughter and, and my grandson are kind of contemporary. So so we were talking about that. And, and we were talking about our wife, our families, our kids. So you begin to get connected to the people. And this is something that in a company, in any business, that's the key for any a, a leader, right. have that connection with their teams. So today, this is I decided to extrapolate what we went through to uh, teach it to business. Because it's, that is that is life. It's critical, right? It's everybody thinks they can do them everything by themselves, and they mm -hmm. right. And you're gonna be more successful with support, right? Is that the right? This is important. Ne never do things alone. This is another another lesson I learned. Never navigate your challenges alone. You need to have your support. Your support can be your circle of of loved ones. Or can be your teammates, you know. But you need to do it uh, uh, with the support. Anything, you need to understand what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths. They have that self awareness because sometimes you believe that you you know everything. You don't know everything. You you you're you're not a Superman. <laughs> you need right. you need to, uh, that. You, so understand your weakness and and support with your team. That that that's the key for any business. Right. That is a very powerful. Uh lesson right it's just something I've, I've i used to when i was younger i could do it all by myself but i've learned in my i didn't have an experience like you but having the support did help you get over those fears and i think the mindset that you have that you had and you shared with everybody else you extended your family you supported each other and you i see it as also you were looking for a good outcome expecting the good is that another term you can say expected to get yes. somehow and, and and today because i i one of them for me was a lesson discovered god in in, yes. in this situation and and i the first week i came back i went to the church i went with with my 
with my daughter and, and my daughter-in-law and my wife. They were already going to this church that today uh, I go. And I, I the first week I went to the church and and she introduced me to the pastor. He knew my story and and I have like 15 months going every week. I do a church service there with a senior oh, wow. citizen. Yeah. And 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 I'm because and, and I'm doing my preparation to become a, as soon as possible one of the leaders in in in, in one of the, this group in the community. Because I discovered that you need to, to be connected to God. This is another thing that I discovered. Any person that is having any business, the only way to be really successful is to get connected with, 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 with God. That's it's the true. only way. It's the only way. You got to have this, to me, this bring out that spirit in you. <laughs> and, it has to be that way because it's not, yeah. you can be rich, but you're not going to be abundant. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that boom then comes when you're connected to 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 that you have that connection. It's I'm seeing what you're saying. I'm I'm picking up hope, faith, and spirit and resilience, right? And that to me affects your mindset. And you well, I, and all. you said that very well. And let me tell you when uh, today that I'm doing a speaking, my speech is called From Captivity to Freedom, embracing the resilience with a okay. faith. With the hope and the love, <laughs> so use it exactly what I'm saying. Oh wow, let's see how you you resonated with me. And love, I think the world does need more love right now too. I think. Oh yeah. I think we, you probably see this too. We focus so so much on negative stuff, and I like to focus on what's the takeaway, what's the good out of it, and that helps with my mindset. And that's why when I heard about your story, I'm like, I want to hear more. I want to get your vibe. Jose, <laughs> that's the right word. You're you're putting out the good kind of vibes that we need to hear. I, for some reason, you go to this situation, and I, I truly today believe that for some reason God put me in this path, and it's kind of a calling that, that you at some point, and 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 you have the calling, and and you and you have to attend it. So I, I decided to talk on this. Because I believe that my story can help others, and and yes. if that helps, is is okay. And 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 I, as I said, I did. I converted this in a coaching program. My coaching program is called Life Pills for a Surviving Guy. Uh, and it's okay. basically this. It's basically this. Basically, what we're talking here is exactly what I, what I, I put in my program, because um, any situation that you go in your life, any, any. There is a kind of a pattern. So the way you decided to overcome it, using this technique, you will survive anything in your life. Anything. Right. That's true. And uh, to go back to your book, it's called From Hero to Villain. Has mm -hmm. that been released yet? Or just it's going to be released in three weeks. I, 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 miss, I mean, in the, in the editing process, it's I like 80%. Oh, yesterday I received the, the cover, you know, of the book. I'm I'm excited, so it's <laughs> gonna be like in two or three weeks out. But it's basically my story, but with a legacy. For for me, the legacy legacy is that the person that when read the book and close it can say, "Wow, is this guy went through this and he's here, telling this story? I can tell my story. I can survive it because that's what I want to put out okay. there." I think that's perfect. I think people, like I mentioned earlier, I think we need to hear more stories like yours that have a, unfortunately, it was not so good in the beginning, but you had a, the right mindset to get yourself through it. And yes. your program, like you said, is called Life Pills for Survival Guide. And your coaching program, is that, is it one-on-one -on -one or is it group? Or I was just I, curious. I do, I do it one-on-one. I do it one-on-one -on -one because this is very, very uh, tailor-made. I, I heard that the, the, the person's need sometimes are more their leadership skills. I, I, I try to help them to un un unleash those skills because the, another thing that I discovered, everybody's a leader uh, by nature. You have right. it inside yourself. Everybody's a leader by nature. And, and that inner force is inside you. You have this to discover it. And once you discover it, 
you, you can become a great leader. So this comes with the empathy, the, the, the connection, the being inspiring others, uh, having communication. So there are, there are a lot of things that I put together in the program. So that's why I do it one-on-one. Gotcha. That's good. You're going to be able to dive deeper based on everybody's Correct. Difference. Correct. And the experience yeah. is different and their takeaway is going to be different. Right. Correct. And I, Correct. I was curious. And then I was thinking about your other, I don't know if I shouldn't say buddies, but are they, do they live near you? I'm assuming you still connect with each other regularly. We did, we did a meeting this the past December, December 27, because the mayor of Houston was a surprise. They called the, the office of the mayor called us and, and, and he proclamated us and he declared uh, December 19 is the official Cirque Six day here in Houston. Oh, that's so, that's so cool. Yes, yeah. So, so we receive a proclamation from the mayor, and 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 because of our our enduring, our resilience, and and it was like a a, a great event. And then uh, we were the six, their families, and their kids, and we we had the opportunity to gather together. We're gonna have a, an event in May. There's every May. There's there are several foundations that advocate for hosted communities here in the US that they, they meet in Washington, DC. And and they do like they call the hostage week. So I'm I'm invited to to that event. It's gonna be like a three or four events. There is a big gala. Uh, there is a foundation called the James Foley Legacy Foundation. By the way, Miss right. Diane Foley, the, the leader of the foundation, she's the mother of uh James Foley was the journalist that unfortunately died like 12 years ago but right. the decapitated alive right. uh, her mother decided to, to create this foundation it's a great foundation today it's going to be a great event because he, even sting is going to attend the event sting you know them he's yes. going to be there yeah he's going to be he's going to be kind of a uh, the, the 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 main uh, uh, part yeah. of the event and yeah. and yeah so in in those events typically you gather with former hostage that, that we are connected, uh, our families of, ho- of people that unfortunately are still have people there because this is something that people are not aware. Uh, there are Americans that have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years still there in other countries. So this is something that's a big issue. And today I, I talk about this, it's, uh, it's a way to raise the awareness. The people right. sometimes are not aware about this. Right, and we don't hear much about that. <laughs> no, don't. people don't talk too much. In the Middle East situation, kind of amplified a little bit because there was hostage situation there. But other people have twelve years. There's a journalist wow. from here from from Houston that have twelve years in Syria, and there there are people. There's a guy that have been more than ten years in China, and there are people that were released recently from Iran that had seven years. Uh, so there are a lot of people are, around the world that, that, that are going through hostage diplomacy. Well, I, I'm glad that we connected because I'm learning from you, even though I'm a, I'm an advocate as well, but mine is from a the health aspect. But you're, this affected your health, but you ended up coming up, like I said, stronger with your, working out with your, with your uh, I call them your buddies, uh, the Sit Go Six. I just think you you supported each other. You need that. And that probably really helped a lot. If it's being isolated would have been, who knows, it might have been a different um, outcome. I, I don't know. Well, we we had several things that we really put it that was for fundamental. One, never letting nobody be down. If somebody was for some reason and somebody down, immediately the, the others pump up. No arguments. Anything that was complaining was stuck immediately. N- never we, we 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 left it go further. And the other thing is that we, we were shouting out every day in Anton there was we want to come back strong in body, in soul, in spirit. So that we it, that became like an anthem that, that we were doing there. So the um it's just amazing story. So what do you think is the biggest takeaway? that you want to share with everybody that you and the Sitco 6 experience, what is the biggest takeaway for people listening? For me, for me, the biggest takeaway is that any adversity in life, you can survive it. You you need to have a proper mindset. You have, you need to get connected, never do this alone. You have to be focused in the situation that you're going through. 
you have to take care of your mental and physical health and you have to connect to this, your spirituality. That's whoever, right. whoever you think, but you have to connect with your spirituality. Excuse and me. you are here having this conversation with someone like me and other people and you are thriving. And I think that is a really great role model, like, you know, what you experienced and how you dealt with it and your leadership and the value that you guys gave each other. So where can people learn more about you, Jose? I have my webpage. It's uh, very easy, joseconnect.com. I'm very active in LinkedIn, too. Mm, if you're going to put there the, the my LinkedIn, I do events. This Friday, I'm going to have my therapist in an audio room with me. Oh, I was wow. having a... She, she, I did a Zoom a few minutes ago with her. I confirmed that she's going to be with me. So I, 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 now my therapist, we are, we became friends and she helped me a lot. Now I'm going to uh, uh, bring to a show that we're going to have on LinkedIn. We, I'm very active there. I publish a newsletter and I have there my calendar. Anybody that wants to contact me, just book me a 30 minutes call and we can talk. As I said, I do this one-on-one. The people contact me. I understand what, what are their needs and they we begin to tailor made it from there. And I do the public speaking that anybody that wants to have a, in their a, a, any events or conference in their companies, I talk with the workers too. So uh, this is basically me. And my book is going to be out very soon that I'm going to be promoting very soon. Right. That's something that by the time this episode is out, it, will, it should be live. For those who are listening, I'll include the links that Jose mentioned. And I think he's very inspirational and motivational, not just inspiration, because what you've been through just, just makes me, just motivates me to keep pushing through, right? We all have those days, but you <laughs> really had a lot. How many days was it? 1,775 days, I think. <laughs> Correct. Yes. My wife always said that you had, I had to talk more about that. I always talk about five years. What's 1,775 days? Yes. Yes. That is uh, amazing. <laughs> You have a, a wonderful, wonderful story, Jose, and I really appreciate you coming here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.